In chapter 17 of the gospel according to St. John, there's a word from the Lord this morning. Look at somebody and say, Pastor Turner is going to talk about the power of a praying child. Amen. That's what I want to talk about for just a few minutes this morning. John 17 and 1. The gospel according to St. John, beginning at verse 1. These words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy son, that thy son also may glorify thee. As thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. I have glorified thee on earth. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, which the glory which I had with thee before the world was. Amen. The power of a praying child. You may be seated. One of the things we have to remember is, is that the devil doesn't want us to pray. Because he knows that when the believer, the Christian prays, there is power in prayer. Somebody said, little prayer, little power. Much prayer, much power. Great prayer. I just happen to believe that prayer changes things. And if you really want something from God, it happens after prayer. When we pray, we touch the heart of God. God who is able to do anything but fail. He has all power in the palm of his hand. He's the same God that in six days made the heaven and the earth and everything in it and then rested on the Sabbath day. God who is able to do whatever we ask him to do. And you know, it's amazing that God would set it up in such a way, the power of prayer and of a praying child, in such a way that it relates to a father and child relationship. Wherever we are told to pray, in the uh, sixth chapter of Matthew, Jesus said, when you pray, say, our Father. We have to understand that God is our Father. And we are His children. That's a good thing. Because there's nothing like a loving Father who will hear the prayers of His children. A father who has compassion, a Father who has love, a Father who cares about his children. And sometimes we have difficulty relating to God as fathers because we want to put him on the same level as an earthly father. When he is the ultimate example of an earthly father. Earthly fathers ought to try their best to be like God. 
We ought to try our best to be the kind of father that God is. And then maybe if you look at it from the standpoint that God is the perfect father, then maybe you won't have such a hard time relating to God as father. And some of us have difficulty praying to God as though he were a father simply because we didn't have a good earthly father. And the term father does not carry on a good connotation for us. Then there are others of us who had good earthly fathers who know what it's like to have a father's love, to have a father's care, to know what it's like to understand the true Hebrew understanding of Abba Father, my loving daddy, my compassionate daddy, my daddy who cares for me and sees about me and understands me and knows me. The Bible tells us that we are to call on God and when we call on him, understand that we are calling on him from the standpoint of a child calling on its daddy. When we pray, that's all prayer is. Talking to your daddy. Tell your neighbor, say neighbor, I'm going to have a talk with my daddy from time to time. We are encouraging you to pray, as a church to pray, as a family to pray, to take prayer home. And when you take prayer home, it's amazing what God can do in the midst of a praying family. Somebody say the family that prays together. And so it behooves us to pray together. Why is it that we understand that? Almost everybody knows that, right? Family that prays together stays together. But then for some reason, we don't pray. For some reason, it's so hard to pray. It's so hard to get on your knees. It takes a special effort. We are asking everybody to be intentional in prayer. To be intentional in prayer. And understand that when you are praying as a family, you are simply calling on a good daddy. A daddy who's able. Now see, some earthly daddies are limited. You may ask some earthly daddies for some stuff and they can't do it. But we've got a father in heaven who's not limited. Now he may not do what we asked him. Because sometimes we don't ask for the right stuff. Or we don't ask for the stuff that's according to his will. But when we pray and talk to God, understanding he is our father, let me tell you, he's going to give you what's best for you, whether you like it or not. And, and, and that's where sometimes we miss it. Simply because we prayed and God didn't give us what we wanted, we say, I ain't praying no more. God didn't give me what I want. I prayed for healing, didn't get my healing. I prayed for this, I prayed for that, didn't get it. Well, I want you to understand that there are some things that are according to God's will. See, see, God knows what it takes for us to be close to him when we're really born again. God knows what it takes. Whatever trial you go through, let me tell you, it was orchestrated by God. If you his child, whatever heartache you're dealing with, yeah, God knew about it. And God said, if you just take time to pray about it, I will make your trouble become your stepping stone. God says, if you just take time to pray about it, I will take your heartaches, your disappointments in life, and I will make them mold you and shape you into a believer that I can say I'm proud. 